In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Litany of Saint Joseph. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Renowned offspring of David, pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God, pray for us. Chaste guardian of the Virgin, pray for us. Foster Father of the Son of God, Pray for us, diligent protector of Christ. Pray for us, head of the Holy Family. Pray for us, Joseph most just. Pray for us, Joseph most chaste. Pray for us, Joseph most prudent. Pray for us, Joseph most brave. Pray for us, Joseph most obedient. Pray for us, Joseph most faithful. Pray for us, pattern of patience. Pray for us, lover of poverty. Pray for us, model of workers. Pray for us, example to parents. Pray for us, guardian of virgins. Pray for us, pillar of family life. Pray for us, comfort of the troubled. Pray for us, hope of the sick. Pray for us, patron of the dying. Pray for us, terror of demons. Pray for us, protector of the church. Pray for us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. God made him the master of his household and prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O oh God, in your ineffable providence, you were pleased to choose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother. Grant, we beg you, that we may be worthy to have him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Saint Joseph, spouse of Mary, Virgin Mother of God's Son, show us how to love and serve them till our life on earth is done. You obey the angel's message, us all to God's will alone, as you let them go to safety. Guide us to our heavenly home. You, the carpenter most humble, Jesus learned from you this trade. Help us work with true devotion, all for God, for love we're made. Noble son of royal David, just and faithful, chaste and true. Teach us how to live with courage, share with Christ his glory too. Hello, family. As Catholics, we know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And when truth is challenged, we're called to be strong and to bring light to a world that can be dark. 
At EWTN, we are with you in this spiritual battle, and we want to thank you for making our work possible. Today, we hope you'll make a gift to EWTN. Your donation will help people around the world discover the gospel message through the daily mass with the Franciscan missionaries of the eternal word, inspirational programs like At Home with Jim and Joy, and news from a Catholic perspective. With your gift, you'll help us continue Mother Angelica's great work of evangelization, and you'll also help us share the truth with a world in need. May God bless you. EWTN is 100% viewer supported. Your gift today keeps EWTN on the air and shares the joy of the gospel with the world. Please make a gift by going to EWTN.com slash my story. On this page, you can also tell us the ways the Lord has impacted your life through EWTN. And new this year, you can record a video testimonial. You may also make a donation by calling us at 1-800-447-EWTN or send your donation to EWTN, 5817 Old Leeds Road, Irondale, Alabama, 35210. Hi, Dr. Agarendi here. Over the years, I have had many an exasperated parent ask me, how do I deal with today's teenagers? Well, now is the time, folks. In Standing Strong, Good Discipline Makes Great Teens, I help you through the highs and lows of guiding and disciplining kids as they move through adolescence. The book is aimed at helping you bring out the best in your teens. I will show you how to effectively discipline as a parent, how to stand strong when other parents yield, set standards that are exceptional. And in the end, your children will benefit for it. Standing Strong, Good Discipline Makes Great Teens by Dr. Ray Garendi. The latest release from EWTN Publishing. Now available at EWTNRC.com or call 1-800-854-6316. The Feast of the Baptism of Our Lord. It is the day we commemorate the sacrament that begins Christian life, the first step to eternal life. EWTN takes you to Rome as Pope Francis baptizes infants in the Sistine Chapel, marking the beginning of their new life in Christ. Solemn Mass for the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. Sunday at 3.30 a.m. Eastern and at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on EWTN. Hi, I'm Prudence Robertson, your host of EWTN's Pro-Life Weekly. In June of 2022, the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, and that was just the beginning. Now, the pro-life movement is fighting on 50 fronts against the aggressive pro-abortion lobby. It's tough to keep up with it all, but your EWTN news team is up to the task. My show, Pro-Life Weekly, will be focusing on what comes next. Watch our on-the-ground coverage and sign up for my weekly newsletter, The Pro-Life Pulse. When you sign up, you'll receive recent show notes and the stories impacting life in our nation and world. We're curating this content so that you can keep a pulse on the moms and babies we're saving and the pro-family culture we're working to build. Subscribe to the Pro-Life Pulse at EWTNnews.com forward slash pro-life and let the EWTN News team serve you. They are saints revered by the church for the value of their writing and teaching and for the sanctity of their lives. With each of them, a charism of wisdom bestowed by the Holy Spirit for the good of the church. Through their legacy, they continue to proclaim the gospel of Christ to the world. They are the Doctors of the Church, an EWTN exclusive series Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern on EWTN. The beauty of Take-Two is I think it organically unfolds. 
we try and weave the faith into every program. We have some topics, people say, how are you gonna bring the faith into this? And we say, you just watch, the Holy Spirit will do it. It's beautiful because life happens and faith is a part of every area of our lives, at least it should be. Join us as we listen, learn, and grow together. On Take Two with Jerry. And Debbie. And you. Weekdays at noon Eastern on EWTN Radio. What should I give Jesus for Christmas? What does he really want? Maybe the best gift I can give Jesus this Christmas is just to be with him. EWTN. Live Truth. Live Catholic. Family, a prayer that we pray together is a powerful prayer. So please pray together with me our EWTN family prayer. Today we pray for the conversion of sinners. O most holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we adore you. We thank you for inviting us into your kingdom and for calling us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Let EWTN Global Catholic Network be a great instrument for the conversion of sinners. Soften the hardened of heart, melt those indifferent to your goodness, and inflame those who are without love. Together with Jesus, we offer our prayers, sufferings, and sacrifices this day for their conversion. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who founded the salvation of the human race on the incarnation of your word, give your peoples the mercy they implore, so that all may know that there is no other name to be invoked but the name of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers, your attitude must be that of Christ. Though he was in the form of God, he did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men. He was known to be of human estate, and it was thus that he humbled himself, obediently accepting even death death on a cross. Because of this, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every other name, so that at Jesus' name every knee must bend in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth, and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. The Word of the Lord. The name of the Lord shall be blessed forever. Praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, both now and forever. From the rising to the setting of the sun is the name of the Lord to be praised. High above all nations is the Lord. Above the heavens is his glory. The name of the Lord shall be blessed Who is like the Lord, our God, who is enthroned on high and looks upon the heavens and the earth below? The name of the Lord shall be blessed He raises up the lowly from the dust. From the dunghill he lifts up the poor to seat them with princes, with the princes of his own people.
Dominus Vobiscu. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Mateu. When Mary, the mother of Jesus, was engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, an upright man unwilling to expose her to the law, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream and said to him, Joseph, son of David, have no fear about taking Mary as your wife. It is by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived this child. She is to have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this happened to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin shall be with child and give birth to a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. Bebum Domini. There was a movie released in 1996 called The Crucible, and it's based on the play of the same name written by Arthur Miller in 1953. And the film is set in 1692 during the infamous Salem Witch Trials. And in a dramatic, memorable scene towards the end of the movie, the main character, John Proctor, portrayed by Daniel Day-Lewis, is forced to sign a confession stating that he had practiced witchcraft so that he might save himself from being hanged, even though such a confession would be a lie. He had never practiced witchcraft. And at first, John signs the document, but then he refuses to hand it over to the judge. And he appeals to the judge saying that his confession and repentance should be sufficient and that it should not be necessary to affix the document to the door of the church. And when the judge demands a reason from John for not handing over the confession, he cries out, because it is my name, because I cannot have another in my, la in my life, because I lie inside myself to lies. In other words, even though John might save his life from execution by signing a false confession, he would have to live the rest of his life with a ruined name. Not only would he be known as a witch, but he would also save his own life by lying while others are being put to death for refusing to confess to something they did not do. And so his name would have been trampled to the dust. And this scene from the crucible helps to illustrate the importance of a name. Today, the church celebrates the feast of the holy name of Jesus a feast that is especially dear to Franciscans. And in the United States, names that are given to children usually do not have a, the same significance as in other times in history or in other cultures. Nowadays, a person is often given a name simply because it is the parent's preference or it's you know, a, a name that the parents really like. However, in ancient times, especially in the scriptures, a person's name signified their dignity, their identity, a, a personality trait, a particular event, or even their mission. The name Abram, whose name means exalted father, is changed to Abraham, which means father of many nations. And this reflects the covenantal promise that God makes to him that his descendants will be as numerous as the stars in the sky or the sand on the seashore. Abraham's son is named Isaac, which means he laughs. And this is a reminder to Abraham and Sarah that they had laughed when they heard God's promise to give them a son in their old age. The name Jesus comes from the Greek version of the Hebrew name Yeshua or Joshua, which means Yahweh saves. And since Jesus is the son of God incarnate, 
His name perfectly signifies his mission. There is no other name that is holier than, name, than the name of Jesus. His name is most holy. And the Franciscan saint Bernardine of Siena preached eloquently about the holy name of Jesus. He says in one of his works, glorious name, gracious name, name of love and of power. Through you, sins are forgiven. Through you, enemies are vanquished. Through you, the sick are freed from their illness. Through you, those suffering and trials are made strong and cheerful. You bring honor to those who believe. You teach those who preach. You give strength to the toiler. You sustain the weary. Our love for you is ardent and glowing. Our prayers are heard. The souls of those who contemplate you are filled to overflowing, and all the blessed in heaven are filled with your glory. Sweet Jesus, grant that with them we too may reign through this, your most holy name. And it's no wonder that we as Christians hold the name of Jesus with such reverence, awe, and respect. The name of Jesus is not a mere word like any other word. It is a word that carries with it an awesome power and signifies our gracious Lord and Savior. This name should always be held with the highest esteem and love, especially as the name of God was held in such honor and respect among the ancient Israelites. There should never be anything evil associated with the name of Jesus. And when the name of Jesus is spoken, it should not lead to feelings of anxiety, dread, or cursing, but rather, if anything, it should inspire feelings of love, reverence, and peace. And it's for this reason that the second commandment of the Decalogue is so crucial. We do not take the name of God or the name of Jesus in vain because these names are so holy and are deserving of our utmost respect. As the name of John Proctor in the movie, The Crucible, signifies the person and his reputation, so the name of Jesus signifies the person who has come to save his people from their sins. As the Catechism teaches in paragraphs 2143 and 2144, the gift of a name belongs to the order of trust and intimacy. The Lord's name is holy. For this reason, man must not abuse it. He must keep it in mind in silent, loving adoration. He will not introduce it into his own speech except to bless, praise, and glorify it. Respect for his name is an expression of the respect owed to the mystery of God himself and to the whole sacred reality it, it evokes. The sense of the sacred is part of the virtue of religion. And unfortunately, many of us do not often have such respect for the name of Jesus. We can be quite careless and callous in using his holy name, which then becomes a source of scandal for other people. And while it is indeed disrespectful to use God's name or the name of Jesus as a curse word, and we should do our best to stop doing so if we have developed this habit, there are even worse ways that we can abuse God's name. For instance, making a promise using God's name and then failing to fulfill that promise reflects poorly upon God and associates his holy name with a lie. And the Catechism speaks of the sin of blasphemy as being manifested, quote, in uttering against God, inwardly or outwardly, words of hatred, reproach, or defiance, in speaking ill of God, in failing in respect toward him in one speech, in misusing God's name. St. James condemns those who blaspheme that honorable name of Jesus by which you are called. The prohibition of blasphemy extends to language against Christ's church, the saints, and sacred things. It is also blasphemous to make use of God's name to cover up criminal practices to reduce peoples to servitude, to torture persons or put them to death. The misuse of God's name to commit a crime can provoke others to repudiate religion. Blasphemy is contrary to the respect due God and his holy name. It is in itself 
a grave sin. And not only is it gravely sinful to speak against God's name or the name of Jesus, but it is also sinful to do what is wrong in their name. And this should make us more hesitant to boast of being faithful Christians, especially when our words or our behavior fall short of being worthy of the name of Christian. If we mistreat or abuse other people while calling ourselves Christians or followers of Christ, we then leave a bad taste in their mouths and prevent them from coming to Christ, the source of their salvation. If we are going to take the name of Jesus upon our lips and claim to be good Christians or faithful Christians, then we had better be doing everything in our power to act accordingly. And so on this feast of the holy name of Jesus, let us renew our commitments to keeping the Lord's name in the greatest honor and respect by striving to love God and to love our neighbor, to not bear false witness to God's holy name. If we confess the name of Jesus with our lips, then it should also be evident through our words and our actions that we truly believe. We should remind ourselves every day of the sanctity of this name and take delight in it. Just as St. Francis of Assisi, when sometimes he would utter the name of Jesus, he would lick his lips as if he had just tasted something sweet. And so by preserving the holiness of the name of Jesus in our minds and hearts, we can more effectively proclaim the power of this name to the world and overcome the works of the evil one. The Father has given us the gift of his Son, the babe of Bethlehem, Jesus Christ. Let us thank him and offer him our prayers and petitions. For the outpouring of the Spirit's gifts of wisdom, courage, and understanding upon our Holy Father, we pray to the Lord. Lord that leaders of nations may unite in a common effort to build peace through justice and concern for the poorest and most neglected members of the human family. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those who have gone before us in faith, that God, who is forgiving, will welcome them into heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray especially uh, during this season for uh, peace throughout the world. We pray for uh, peace between uh, different peoples, between the Israelis and the Palestinians, and between Ukraine and Russia, and for an end to war. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear Most loving Father, with humility and gratitude, we thank you for sending your Son, the, the Word incarnate, as our Savior and Lord. Grant that we may love you in union with the Holy Mother of God, with the faith-filled heart of Saint Joseph, and with the missionary fervor of, this, of the shepherds. Like them, may we find joy and fulfillment in knowing, loving, and serving the babe of Bethlehem. Through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the Bringing you these offerings from what your bounty bestows on us, we pray, O Lord, that just as you have given to Christ, obedient even until death, the name that saves, so you may grant us protection by its power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our minds, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up it through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we meet this friend in this song, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Francis and Claire, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your program church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Precepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere. Pater oster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur momentum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat Quesimus Domine ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, Europe misericordiae tui aduti, et a peccato simus semper liberi, et ab omnipetabatione securi, expectantes beatam spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Jesu Christi. Domine 
Jesu Christe, quid existi apostolis tuis, pacem elinquo vobis, pacem eam do vobis, ne respicias peccata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tuae, eam que secundo voluntatem tuam pacificare ac adonare dinieris, qui vivis a reinas in secula seculorum. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum. Et un spiritu tuo. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter in my grave, but on this day of word, and my soul shall be healed. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name through all the earth. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the blessed sacrament, we offer the following prayer. I believe that you, O Jesus, are in the most holy sacrament. I love you and desire you. Come into my heart. I embrace you. O oh, never, never leave me. May the burning and most sweet power of your love, O oh Lord Jesus, I beseech you, absorb my mind, that I may die through love of your love, who were graciously pleased to die through love of my love. Amen.
Let us pray. May the sacrificial gifts offered to your majesty, O Lord, to honor Christ's name, and which we have now received, fill us, we pray, with your abundant grace, so that we may come to rejoice that our names, too, are written in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominus Vobiscu. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. God our Father, 
who wills that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of your truth. We beg you to send laborers into your harvest and grant them grace to speak your word with all boldness so that your word may spread and be glorified and all nations may know you, the only God, and him whom you have sent, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of the Americas, Mary, Mother of the Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal Word, pray for us. Hello, I'm Matthew Bunsen. I'd like to wish you, our EWTN family, a happy and blessed Christmas season. What are you afraid of? Some people are so afraid of pain they never face their wounds. So afraid of death they never really live. So afraid of being hurt they never form friendships. So afraid of failure they never take risks. Fear stops us from living. St. Paul had every reason to be afraid. From 2 Corinthians, he wrote, Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. I spent the night and day on open sea. I've been in danger from rivers, bandits, storms, my own countrymen, the Gentiles. But he also wrote, Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or the sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors because of him who loved us. What are you afraid of? Whatever it is, it's not as strong as your Father's love for you. Sure, we're weak and life's frail, but we're not our own security. As the psalmist prayed, God himself is our fortress. In 87 AD, in the city of Milan in Italy, the Bishop St. Ambrose baptized a very unusual young man. His name was Augustine. I'm Father Charles Connor, and this is The Church in Time. St. Augustine was born in present-day Algeria in 354 AD. As a young student and a professor, he led a very rationalist and rather immoral life. His mother prayed him into Catholicism and her prayers were answered. He became a priest. He became the Bishop of Hippo in Africa. He became a leading defender of the faith against the Donatists and the Pelagians. He wrote his magnificent confessions. He wrote the City of God, and he wrote a magnificent treatise on the Trinity. And of all the Western fathers of the church, he has had the deepest impact on religious thought through the ages. He died in 430 A.D. And this has been The Church in Time.